Good morning, I'm Jody Lippert, Executive Director at Nordic Northwest. And I'm John Nelson, President of the Board. Uh, Jody and I are having FICA this morning, so we thought we'd sit down and visit here with you and kind of take a little break this morning. Um, we wanted to welcome everybody to this uh, third video presentation. We just have a few comments today. Um, our thoughts, of course, continue to be with everyone that's had any kind of health impact from uh, COVID-19. The virus is uh, still with us and the trends are sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but um, we're here and uh, as we have been doing since March, um, we're trying to stay busy and active and communicate with you, our membership, very, very effectively and frequently. Um, now, on top of that, we've had this smoke recently. And today, looking outside, it's, you know, we have clear air. And we've had some nice air for the last few days. It's been pretty nice. We can breathe. The air is sweet. And now we we'll get some rain. So the grass outside, I'm pointing at the lawn outside Nardia House, is uh, thick and green. So uh, thanks to the trolls. I think Brad Nodell has been working on the lawn, so it looks fantastic. Um, but the smoke has been troubling. So I uh, had gone through the membership list, and I looked at all the members that live outside of the immediate Portland area. And we have members uh, in Palos Verdes Estates, Southern California, and uh, elsewhere in California, uh, in Ashland, several members in the Bend area, uh, Walla Walla. In fact, our former president's home is in Walla Walla, uh, the Jensen's. Um, and I think all of these folks have been impacted by the smoke of the wildfires. So we hope you're okay, and uh, particularly in Ashland and Central Oregon, uh, we hope the smoke hasn't been too bad. We have uh, family in Silverton, and they, that was sort of ground zero of, of the, uh, the uh, Beachy Creek, Beachy Creek smoke from there. Um, so anyway, it's been tough, and it's nice to see that the fires are, are coming to a conclusion here. Of course, until the fall rains really start, we get some snowpack up the mountains, they're still gonna smolder. Um, also about the wine uh, industry, um, of course we have a number of members, uh, former board uh, members who are in the wine business, John Bergstrom, uh, Leah Jorgensen in particular. Uh, we also have the Sandness uh, uh, family, uh, Pike Hill, Johan. Um, we do hope the smoke hasn't impacted your crops and your business uh, in a negative manner. So we wish you the best and we hope for uh, brighter days ahead. So with that, uh, I wanted to acknowledge the fire and the smoke uh, for us Oregonians on top of the COVID that we've had. It's been a tough year, so I think we're all uh, hoping for a 2021 that's bright and cheerful uh, in our state, and certainly once we see Nordy House open and full of activities and uh, noise and uh, chit chat and so forth, that'll be good. Um, I wanted to mention my little sidebar. Um, some of you know I live in Bend uh, about half time and also in Portland. So I go between Portland and uh, uh, Bend on Highway 22 and 20 frequently. I'd be doing it today except it's closed. Um, if you transit that route uh, east of Gates before you get to the town of, uh, of uh, Detroit, if you have a sharp eye, you'll see a little sign that says Little Sweden on it. And uh, many of you may not know this, but Little Sweden was uh, settled by the Nystrom family from Sweden in, uh, according to MacArthur's book, Geographic Place Names, in the late, mid to late 1800s. So it's been in continuous ownership uh, for a long, long time. It's currently for sale. Sadly, I think, looking at the maps you can see online, I think the Beachy Creek Fire jumped the highway and it's probably no longer there. And that's particularly sad. Uh, that was a going concern at one time. Um, it certainly been there for um, uh, uh, almost a century and a half, maybe 140 years in, in that ownership. Uh, incidentally, the Nystrom family built a curiosity. There's a, a uh, water wheel uh, affair you see in, in the wide spot in the road in Niagara, Oregon, down the road a couple of miles. And that was a uh, Scandinavian uh, mechanical device they used to generate electricity for the sawmill. So there is some Scandinavian history right there. That region, of course, looks just like parts of western Sweden and parts of Norway with the deep canyons in the water. So anyway, those little sidebar stories, there's many places in Oregon with those Scandinavian names, including Norway and Denmark down the coast. So 
Uh, anyway, we hope you're doing very well and uh, that the impact from the smoke hasn't compounded your life on top of the COVID-19. So with that, I'll, um, I'll let my FICA partner here <laughs> speak to some, maybe some more timely. Uh, yeah, my thoughts topics. are with the community as we go through this pandemic crisis and the most recent crisis of wildlife fires. But um, through this, these crises, we are open, Nerdy House is open. We're able to have um, smaller size gatherings at um, Nerdy House coming up in October. It is our first Friday night lecture s series of the season. So we'll have um, people will join us in person and we'll also live stream that event. So throughout this pandemic, we'll have events and if it's appropriate, we'll live stream those events. So if you, because of um, distance or because you're not comfortable joining us in person, you'll still be able to participate through live streaming. We'll have workshops this fall and holiday activities. So, you know, please look at our e-newsletters and our website for the most updated information. Yeah, I think it's it, it's really helpful to know that the events that Jody has outlined, these are, you can find these through by navigating the website so you can see what's coming up and if you have the capability to live stream, it's an effective way to participate in events because it's not always easy to get out here in the evening. So I urge you to do that. Um, anything about the holidays? We yeah, we'll have, um, we'll, our exhibit, we're having our um, scan fair volunteer committee will do a Christmas exhibit for us and they're working on activities that they'll have during that Christmas holiday. We won't be able to gather as a large festival, but we'll have some type of scan fair activities that that committee's working on. Yeah, and we will be decorating Norton House, so it will look like Christmas. So if you come over here for lunch, if we're still on the limited schedule at Broder and for Finware, uh, I anticipate it look very much like Scandinavian Christmas here. I want to keep up some of these traditions. Um, well, then we've had the uh, recent raffle, which was very successful, and then the board challenge uh, for some fundraising. Judy, you want to talk about the yeah, the, Keep uh, Portland raffle. Rolling Raffle. Thanks again to um, Sherry Briggs and um, Christy Dickinson for organizing that raffle and for everybody that purchased raffle tickets and participated. We, unfortunately, we only had three winners for that, but those winners were pretty <laughs> delighted they won and um, that raffle raised $18,000 to support our mission at Nordic Northwest. So thanks for everybody's participation. Yeah, that was a terrific event. And if you watched it on uh, uh, YouTube, did we broadcast live? I'm looking at Veneta. Facebook. Um, we, uh, we had some technical issues there with the microphone, so we apologize for that, but we're working on that. Uh, we budgeted, budgeted some funds for an upgrade in our uh, video and the audio uh, technology that's necessary to, to do these types of events, and I think we'll do them more frequently. It seems to be a good way to communicate with everyone. Um, another uh, topic having to do with the fundraising because as we've spoken before, because of the closure, the, the budget was cut not once but twice. Uh, so we have reduced uh, operations and reduced expenses. Um, we do have to maintain our operation, certain expenses that continue on, uh, our overhead. Um, so we have a board challenge uh, that will be coming to you soon. But so far, so far the board members have met their goal of raising $100,000 by themselves. And that will come to you as a challenge. So that money can be matched, and our goal is to raise $200,000. So that's an exciting um, exciting uh, process, uh, and uh, we're very successful so far. So um, listen up, and we'll have that information coming out to you soon. And then the way you can participate is by volunteering for Nordic Northwest. Volunteers are the backbone and the heart at Nordic Northwest. Um, last year we had 250 volunteers participate in various activities throughout the organization. We have 20 volunteer committees. So if that's something that interests you, we would love for you to sign up and volunteer. Just check our web website for the most recent opportunities and um, that's one way to get involved with um, Nordic Northwest. Well, so thanks for watching. Uh, wherever you are, whether you're down the street or in Ashland or Austin, Texas, our best to you, and we'll be bringing more information to you in the near future. So yep. thanks, Jody. Yeah, thank you. Join coffee. us for another coffee chat. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye.